starts right now. And we begin tonight with the weather and the changing temperatures this Thanksgiving week. Our meteorologist Adam Kasky is here with more. Adam. Yeah, we were in the lower 80s earlier today. Now we're down into the 60s, but the north wind keeps pushing in that cooler air. So anticipate temperatures right near 50 by tomorrow morning in and around San Antonio, about 50 degrees south side near Stinson 52. You get into the hill country and we've got some upper 40s, but it gets even cooler in the mornings ahead. Notice by Wednesday morning, 39 Thanksgiving morning at sunrise. Only 41 and even Friday 43. So jacket weather this week. And then we've got some more fluctuations to talk about, along with an update to the rain chances for Thanksgiving and just how warm the afternoons will be getting in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. New on the night beat, a break in a case we have been following for months. Tonight, a man is in jail in connection to a deadly shooting that happened back in May at the Provence Social Club on UTSA Boulevard. Now, we want to show you 19-year-old Seth Rocket. San Antonio police arrested him today. He was wanted on multiple warrants, including one for murder. Rocket is the second person who's been arrested in this case. The first suspect, 34-year-old Noah James Patterson, walked in front of our cameras shortly after police arrested him. It stems from that incident at Pravat on May 18th when police say an argument between two groups in that parking lot led to gunfire. A 21 year old man was killed. Three others were hurt. In other news now, her ex-boyfriend is accused of assaulting her and trying to break into her home, but tonight He's still a wanted man. Yeah, we first introduced you to Heather Martinez in March, shortly after her ex, Simon Villa, disappeared. Nearly nine months later, Martinez spoke to the night team's John Paul Barajas about living in fear that he could return. He's going to kill me. I, he's already, he's threatened me numerous times. Nine months of watching, waiting, and looking over her shoulder. Heather Martinez says she now moves often all out of fear her ex, a wanted man, will find her. This is just a failure, another failure in the system, like failing everybody as far as like a cry for help and then a judge against bond. Simon Villa was arrested for assaulting and stalking Martinez at the end of 2019. The physical scars have healed, but Martinez adds her mental trauma resurfaced when Villa was released from jail at the end of 2022. And then shortly after, police say he tried breaking into her home in February of this year. The first time we went to trial, he literally said he was going to kill me. He was going to kill my, me and then kill himself. So, and I'm pretty sure he's going to make word on that. When he was breaking into my house, he wasn't going there with a gun just to talk. Villa was arrested that night on charges of attempted burglary with intent to assault, along with felon in possession of a firearm. Yet, he was given bond, again, this time with an ankle monitor. Bear Kind DA's office told us back in March, Villa cut that off, and he's been on the run ever since. I now carry a gun, like I have to carry a gun everywhere I go. Um, again, I moved my, I had to move my house. Um, I mean, everything's just been a burden for myself and my family. Now, nearly a year after Villa disappeared, Martinez has this message for authorities working to find him. I want him to be found so I can live with a clear conscience and go somewhere, not thinking I'm going to run into him somewhere. Via's criminal history includes assault and stalking, and that's all prior to being arrested at Martinez's home. Now, we asked the DA's office why somebody with this criminal history would be given bond. We were told that judges are required to do so under the Texas Constitution whenever somebody is charged with a new offense. Currently, there is a warrant out for Via's arrest. At the Paul Elizondo Tower, John Paul Barajas. KSA 12 News. Let's hope they find him. Thank you, John Paul. Well, tonight we're learning about an Edgewood ISD police officer who was arrested earlier this month. This man, Juan Macias, facing charges for injuring a woman in a domestic violence incident. According to an arrest report, he's accused of pulling a woman off a sofa, causing her to hit a table and injure her hand and knee. Macias arrested on November 8th and has since bonded out. The school district released a statement saying, quote, Edgewood Independent School District is aware of an incident involving and subsequent arrest of an EISD police officer on November 8th, 2023. Per district policy, the officer is on leave while an investigation is underway. We ask that you respect the privacy of all parties involved, end quote. Now, while we're discussing this, we also want to take this chance to remind you that if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, there are local places like the Family Violence Prevention Services and the Bear County Family Justice Center for you to get help. There are also national resources, and you can scan this QR code that you see on your screen for a full list. 
Also tonight, lots of questions after a house fire. We want to show you the scene this afternoon over on Esmeralda Drive, not far from Culebra and North General McMullen. Now, crews say that nobody was home when the fire or the flames broke out here, but dogs were inside the home at the time. Only two of them got rescued. The other two didn't survive. It's unclear at this point what caused that fire, but crews are saying that hoarding conditions inside of that home made it more difficult for crews to put out the fire. Now, I was kind of surprised when I heard it is a first for the state of Texas. Not so surprised it's happening right up the road in San Marcos. Yeah, Texas State University is signing a $3 million contract to host the first debate in the 2024 presidential election. It's one of four sites that's set to host those debates next year. Texas State, by the way, the only university in Texas with an alum who served as the president, and that would be... Lyndon B. Johnson. The Texas State President Kelly Danfu says this kind of event will generate excitement on campus and hopefully send more students to the polls. We're glad that we have the first presidential debate because we know that that will be the one that will probably be the most watched one. I'm not really super in tune with a lot of political events, so the fact that it'll be so easily accessible is going to be really cool. I was just surprised the state hasn't had a presidential yeah. debate before, but the first presidential debate slated for September 16th, 2024 at Texas State's Strahan Arena. Okay, so here's something to save you some money. You can get more free COVID tests from the government. If you remember back in September, the U.S. government started offering them for free four at a time. So now, even if you got those four, you can get four additional ones. And if you haven't ordered them at all, well, you can get eight tests. Just go to covidtest.gov to get them. They're set to start shipping next week. And here's the thing. Some of the tests are going to be past their expiration dates. However, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration says that they still work. By the way, we checked, and the cheapest COVID tests cost about five bucks. We're now just three days away from the annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner. Between now and then, more than 550 turkeys will be prepared to be served to 25,000 people in San Antonio. A lot of birds. Now, this Alamo City staple is free. It's open to anyone. And because it's so big, organizers were already preparing today. The doors open at 9 a.m. Thursday morning at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center downtown. And if you need a ride, VIA offering free bus rides to the dinner for people and families who plan on going. Now staying with the Thanksgiving theme, the San Antonio Food Bank has always stepped it up when it comes to helping people in need. Yeah, that is no different during the holidays. The Food Bank helps around 100,000 families every week. This holiday season has delivered around 10,000 turkeys so far to those dealing with food insecurity. And Food Bank President. There's a huge opportunity for everyone to make a difference on Thanksgiving Day, and that's our annual turkey trot. So it's a 5K walk run, it's downtown. All the revenue from the turkey trot goes to help purchase turkeys for families. Now, if you want to register for the annual turkey trot, it's $45 if you sign up before Thanksgiving. $50 day off. Okay, so let's say though the 5K isn't really for you, but you still want to help. Well, you could visit the link that you see there on your screen, safoodbank.org. Now, if you if you yourself need help from the San Antonio Food Bank, you can also call that number that you see there on your screen. It's 210-431-8326. The Food Bank can also help you with SNAP benefits, finding immediate food assistance, and also some job training opportunities. Also want to give you a heads up about city closures on Thanksgiving Day. City Hall and most municipal offices will be closed on Thursday as well as Friday in observance of the holiday. If you have trash or recycling pickup on Thursdays, that will shift to Friday instead. City services like police and EMS will, of course, operate as normal during the holiday. Other city services will be limited. You can find the full list on KSAT.com. And now let's turn to your Nightbeat News Flash. President Joe Biden thinks that a deal is close to free the more than 200 hostages in Hamas control over in Gaza. That's what he said this afternoon at the White House's annual turkey pardon. But when a reporter pressed him, he didn't give specifics. The Biden administration says that there are 10 Americans that are unaccounted for that they believe are among the hostages. Now, the Supreme Court has struck down a petition from the former Minneapolis police officer convicted in the death of George Floyd. Derek Chauvin's lawyers appealed on the basis that Chauvin didn't have a fair trial. Now, if you remember, a jury found Chauvin guilty of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in the death of Floyd. 
Ticketmaster and its parent company, Live Nation, have refused to hand over documents to the government about their business practices. So right now, a Senate subcommittee is issuing a subpoena in order to get those documents. Now, you might remember this all started after concert goers had trouble accessing Taylor Swift tickets on Ticketmaster's website. That happened earlier this year. A company spokesperson says it's been cooperative in the investigation, but want some of its business practices to remain confidential. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Are you flying to see your family this week? Are they flying to see you? Why the record number of travelers could be in for delays and how you can plan ahead. Not good timing. A cross-country storm could put a damper on your holiday travel this week. This is happening as record-breaking travel is expected in the skies, also on the ground. The Transportation Security Administration is expecting to screen something like 30 million people, which is the highest number of Thanksgiving air travelers that we've seen since 2005. Yeah, ABC's Melissa Don has details. Thanksgiving holiday travel is underway. And already breaking records, the FAA forecasting 50,000 flights expected the day before Thanksgiving. I watched the lines. The lines are moving. They look crowded, but they're moving. The Department of Transportation says they're working closely with airlines to plan for and around any bad weather this week. While we can't control the weather, we will also be using every tool at our disposal to keep cancellations and delays as low as possible in the first place. Golf ball size hail slamming parts of Louisiana as the region faces tornado threats through the evening. This severe weather threatening holiday travel plans as heavy rain, wind and snow from the south to the northeast are expected. This cross country storm is going to work as an impediment to many travel plans Tuesday evening. A lot of folks by this point have already started their holiday vacation and they're planning on hitting the roads along the I-95 corridor. That's when we're going to see the heaviest rain from Atlanta into D.C. right on up into New York City. If you plan on driving Driving to your destination this year, AAA says nearly 50 million people are expected to hit the roads. The advice I've been giving for 20 years now is to leave Thanksgiving morning itself. But some good news. Gas prices dropping about 36 cents from last year. And in L.A., the I-10 freeway back open after that major artery was shut down for more than a week following a massive fire under the roadway. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Los Angeles. Okay, here's the deal, though. If you plan to leave your car at San Antonio International, here's the parking situation. Short-term parking, that's booked. But you can still get long-term and also economy spots. Good luck. All right. All right. Tomorrow will be three weeks for my beard. <laughs> yes, it is itching. All right, we're in the stretch of No Shave November home stretch, raising money for 12 cancer foundations. If you would like to donate... We would love your donation. Scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Some of the morning show guys are kind of kicking my whiskers ah. in this little contest. Last year, KSAT raised more than $30,000 to benefit cancer research, treatment, and prevention. Hope to raise at least that much this year. And the beard can keep you warm tomorrow. Yeah. Warmer tomorrow, yeah. right? It's getting cooler. It is. We're cooling off. We have that north wind that's pushing in the cooler air, and we're already starting to feel it outside, and we're going to feel it more so in the days ahead. Turning windy tonight, some gusty winds out there out of the north, and that's going to last through the first half of the day tomorrow. The cooler air, as we mentioned, moving in. Highs tomorrow, only lower 60s, we think, for most of us, and then small rain chances ahead. Got a little update to my thoughts on Thanksgiving rain chances. Let's start with tomorrow at sunrise. 7 a.m., 50 degrees, some upper 40s in the hill country. Then by noon, we're up to 59 for a high temperature then of 63. We hit at 3, 4 p.m. So that's about 20 degrees cooler than what we had earlier this afternoon. So quite a contrast because of the cold front that moved through and that brisk north wind that's kicking in. Tomorrow afternoon, Comfort and Bernie 57 along with Bulverde. Meanwhile, 64, Poteet, Pleasanton and Floresville. Even south side of town near Stinson about 64, Hondo 62. But look at the temperature trend for the afternoon highs. We remain in the 60s all the way through Saturday, which is below average. The average high is 70, and then check out Sunday and Monday, 50s for afternoon highs. We'll have another cold front that hits on Sunday. 
dropping our temperatures a little bit more and notice Thanksgiving stands out at only 60 degrees for that high temperature. I want to get to the wind here. It's out of the north now, steady at 10 to 15 miles per hour, but it's going to be increasing and picking up. And I do think we'll see some wind gusts tonight through the first half of tomorrow around 30 to 35 miles per hour. So notice our wind gust forecast has just within a few hours here, our gusts picking up to 30, 35 miles per hour. That'll pretty much be the case through the morning commute. And then once we get into tomorrow afternoon, the wind is still noticeable. It just starts to pump the brakes a little bit. All right, here's the big picture. And you saw earlier from that ABC story of the big broad wound up system that's in the central part of the country right now. Precipitation spreading from the Canadian border now into the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf Coast of Louisiana. This system is pushing eastward, but what's going to affect us is this little upper level low that pinches off from at and sets up over northern Mexico on Wednesday and then moves toward us on Thursday. Often these can be good rainmakers, those cut off upper lows. This one, however, isn't going to be, which in terms of timing being Thanksgiving, may be a good thing for us. We're talking a 20% chance of showers. And actually right now, judging by the latest information that's still trickling in, I'm thinking of dropping this to a 10% chance on Thanksgiving. Wednesday, no travel troubles across the state or even neighboring areas. Thursday, I'm not anticipating any travel troubles. Just some extra clouds from that system that's uh, moving in. 41 in the morning on Thanksgiving by the afternoon. Get outside after the Thanksgiving dinner, go for the walk, 60 degrees. Now across the whole nation in terms of travel, notice how that system progresses eastward, the one in the central part of the country. So by noon Tuesday, we've got precipitation from the Great Lakes, especially toward Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Washington, DC, even down to Atlanta, Atlanta being important because it's a hub. But by Tuesday evening and night, that precipitation is out of the Atlanta area and the busiest travel day Wednesday. There's just a few showers hanging on in parts of New England, but luckily mostly of the liquid variety, which helps out when it comes to air travel. Of course, notice going forward. We talked about those high temperatures, the morning lows as cool as 39 Wednesday morning, and then we get into the weekend. More fog and drizzle sets in by Saturday morning, so it looks like some dampness to start the weekend. Gray sky Sunday, still a little damp with some isolated showers right now at 30% with the cooler temperatures on the way. So feeling more like fall outside the rest of this week and looking good too. check out these shots of the sunset earlier today. That's from Taylor at Wood Woodlawn Lake Park. And here's another one. And oh yeah, put on a good show for us tonight. Mother Nature did. Beautiful. Stunning. Thank you. All right, it gives me no joy to say the Spurs losing streak continues. And some of these games, they're not just losing, they're getting blown out, Mary. From our perspective, it's been a lot of the same, but from head coach Greg Popovich's perspective, he says that he likes what he saw tonight. And in fact, he'll be sleeping good because he saw progress. We know where the Spurs struggles are, struggling to hang on to those leads, but how will they fix it and how long will it take? The Spurs have now matched the fifth longest losing streak in franchise history. Steele and Harlan are gearing up to face each other in the Alamo Dome for the third round of the playoffs. We visit with both teams ahead. It's the first of two games between the youngest team in the NBA and the oldest. The Spurs and Clippers square off in the Alamo City. Second quarter, defense turns into offense. Keldon Johnson on the fast break, and man, that was a nasty Euro step. Spurs trail by nine. Now listen closely. A wave of boos for former Spur Kawhi Leonard. There were plenty of open three opportunities in this game, but neither team shot the ball particularly well from long range. And right after, Victor Wembanyama re-enters the game and the rookie lights a spark, drains a step back jumper, and that's followed by a block on Russell Westbrook on the other end. Although there wasn't a whole lot to cheer for tonight if you're a Spurs fan, as Paul George and Kawhi Leonard led the Clippers to their second straight win, 124 to 99. Kelvin Johnson finished with 22 points. Jetty Osman added 17 for San Antonio, and the Spurs losing streak extends to nine. 
And just like that, we are on to the regional round of the high school football postseason. This Friday, inside of the Alamo Dome, 11 and 1 Steel and undefeated Harlan will meet for a spot in the Class 6A D2 quarterfinals. The Steel Knights overcame some adversity in their second round playoff matchup against McNeil. The two teams were tied at 21 going into halftime, and Steel responded with 21 unanswered points in the second half to advance. We started off slow in the first half, but during the second half, we we had just had a different momentum, you know, different energy, you know, because you know we had people stepping up, and that's the most important thing because we need leaders on this team, and that's what we did. On the other side, Harlan sees Steele's football program as the gold standard, and the Hawks are trying to build a similar culture. So far, they're on track. Last year, they made a deep playoff run to the regional round, and more recently, Harlan pitched a 48-0 shutout last week to up its season record to 12-0. It's a great feeling to be out here, you know. Obviously, we can't eat too much because we play the day after um, in the morning, too. So it's going to be an early game. But uh, I definitely think that it's, it's a great feeling to be out here still and, you know, still to be kicking it and having a good time with my friends and my coaches and everything like that. I mean, it's our senior year, so we got to end this right. Just 16 teams remain in the 6A D2 bracket. Harlan Steel kickoff at 11 a.m. on Black Friday. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys are cruising through their take care of business part of their schedule. They have one more before they get back to the prove it portion. Dallas is set to play Washington on Thanksgiving for the 11th time on Thursday. That's after a 33 to 10 win at Carolina, marking the Cowboys second straight 20 plus point victory over a double digit underdog. After Thanksgiving, Dallas plays a five game stretch against teams currently with winning records. The Texans showed grit in their Week 11 win over Arizona for Houston's third straight victory. Next up is an AFC South battle with Jacksonville. At 7-3, the Jaguars are a game ahead of Houston in the standings, but the Texans beat them 37-17 in Week 3, so Houston owns the tiebreaker and would overtake first place with a win. Now, after the break, we're looking ahead to the Roadrunners' pivotal conference showdown on Black Friday. spot in the American Athletic Conference Championship game is on the line when the UTSA football team and nationally ranked Tulane collide on Black Friday in New Orleans. It's a nationally televised game you can watch here on KSAT 12. As it stands now, UTSA and Tulane are tied with SMU atop the league standings with 7-0 conference records. For the Roadrunners to host the championship game, they would need a win and some help from Navy against SMU. The Green Wave will be UTSA's biggest test since its early non-conference schedule. They're big, they're physical, they're very well coached. Uh, they do a lot of things with their defense. Uh, they fit up correctly, they tackle very well. They've got good players, they've got a championship pedigree, and uh, they're really good. It's going to be a, a, a little dog fight. Like you're, every inch is going to seem like you're fighting for your life Friday. Head coach Jeff Trailer still avoiding answering any questions related to the reports of him interviewing for the Texas A&M head coaching vacancy. His focus remains on the seniors and the season at hand. See. It's where it needs to be. Yes. Yeah. I don't blame him. Well on Friday. Thanks, Thank Mary. <laughs> we'll be right back. So this next story is for anybody who's going to be in the Hill Country anytime soon. For the first time, an ice rink is set to open in Bernie for the holidays. Yeah, it's going to be at the West Blanco Road across from Main Plaza, open for business starting Thanksgiving Day. You can skate through December 31st. For ticket information, just head on over to ksat.com and look for this article. I think we should send Adam Kasky to all the rinks around town and do it. the area and see which ones you like best. Let's do it. I've noticed a few new ones popping up. Yeah. Here and there. Now this one in Bernie we know about. Actually, noticeably cooler in the mornings. Jacket weather. Look at Wednesday morning, 39. Yeah. That's, that's skating weather. Yeah, we'll let you skate that day. Perfect. Stay warm. Good night.